Vibe coding is becoming insanely trendy. It's this idea that you can code apps just by using English. For example, we made this app that would convert any TikTok video, download and transcribe it with just one click using GPT-5. Now this is incredibly cool, but the problem that a lot of people have is when you're vibe coding, you get vibe debugging. And that is when you get errors like this. Now your app seems to work some of the time, but every now and again, you try and do something and you just get a load of errors. The usual process is copying the errors, giving it to cursor and just asking it to fix it. But every time we send a message, it costs us money. And 90% of the time it will introduce errors or remove code elsewhere in our code base. And that's what creates these infinite AI loops that you may be hitting. And it's exactly this process that's causing thousands of Vibe coders to waste credits. For example, this user spends $200 per month just to try and build their app on Lovable. This user was on the $25 per month plan and they've already spent $225. And it doesn't just stop there. Even people using more powerful tools like Cursor are spending $200 on AI tokens and credits. And the worst part is most of this money is going on sending prompts to try and fix bugs like this. Now, if you're going through exactly the same thing, constant debugging, the AI is rewriting code you don't want it to touch, and you're worried about spending three, four, five hundred dollars a month on AI tokens, I'm going to show you a solution that can solve all of that for just $25. Now, we call this vibe planning. It's a predictive way of building a app figuring out what errors could come up and making sure that we don't run into those before we even get started. And it all works by following a simple three-step process. Now, step one is incredibly important. It all starts with cloning a code base that already has user accounts set up payments already integrated, database already linked, and security baked in. So you don't have to wrestle with things like getting authentication working in your app. Because like it or not, every app that you build requires accounts to be set up. Just look at examples like Slack. In order to get started, we need to have accounts set up. It's exactly the same thing with Zoom. In order to get started, we need to sign up for an account. It's exactly the same thing with Claude. I have a user account set up, and when I go to upgrade my plan, those payments will be linked directly to my account. And in order for your app to become a business and to work 100% of the time, these features should never be vibe coded. They are required for whatever app you build. And it's crucial these things work 100% of the time. So step one in vibe planning must be duplicate or clone a boilerplate. And that's exactly what we offer inside a CodeSpring subscription. Now, when it comes to vibe debugging, our whole philosophy is why not just avoid the bugs before they even happen? So step two is build your own documentation. So let's say we're building an app called Shazam Pro. Instead of taking our idea and giving it directly to Lovable, we're going to plan it out first with CodeSpring. So we're going to describe the features. For example, we want to add a TikTok video link. We want to download that video, convert it to an MP3, transcribe it. We're then going to select a starter template. Now we recommend you use the CodeSpring starter template. Then we're just going to click generate with AI. And this is the crazy part about vibe planning. Because we already have a structured code base for us, the AI knows exactly how to build our features on top of it. So why is this different to using something like ChatGPT or Claude. Well, if I were to go into Claude and I asked it to do exactly the same thing, I said, design me an app that will download any TikTok video, transcribe it with OpenAI, isolate the music track and Shazam it to identify the song. It's going to go ahead and create us a plan. And if I were to take this and give it to something like Cursor, it may be able to create us some of the app, but it's not going to have payments already integrated, website already built, database set up and user accounts with security already built into the app. So, so I'm going to have to custom code these things myself. Now, even if we were to use some sort of free template, template, Claude doesn't understand the structure of that code base. It can't read the code and it doesn't know how it's all put together, which means this documentation isn't aligned with the code that we've currently got. So you're just breaking things up unnecessarily. So now you can see CodeSpring has completed the plan. It's taken our idea of Shazam Pro, it's taken each of the features from my app and designed exactly how that feature should work. And all of this is designed and trained to work with the tech that's created inside the CodeSpring boilerplate. Now inside CodeSpring, you can actually click this plus button and then click on generate PRD. And what this will do is create detailed documentation on how to build that specific feature. It's much the same as going into Claude and saying, design me this app, but with a key difference. Instead of writing documentation like this without any context on how the rest of our app works, CodeSpring is using all of the context from our plan, all of the tech from the boilerplate and the notes that we've taken for this specific feature to create downloadable files that we can just give directly to Cursor or Lovable to build the app for us. So let's show you how this works in action. We're going to go ahead and we're going to build an app that will download any TikTok video, convert it to an MP3 file and transcribe it with audio. Now CodeSpring's already planned out how to do this for us. 
all we're going to do for each of our features is generate a product requirement doc. So we've got one telling us how to add a TikTok video link to our app, how to download that video, how to convert that video to an MP3 file, and then finally how to transcribe it with OpenAI. Now we've already done the first part of this, so we're going to skip to the transcription. So you can see, for example, if we go to this TikTok video, we can actually download it, convert it to an MP3 file. But what we haven't done is actually transcribed it. All we need to do is come to our CodeSpring account for the transcribe audio to OpenAI, generate a requirement doc, download it, upload it into Cursor, and in our prompt, tell the AI exactly what to do and send it off. Cursor has all the information on how to create this feature for us without creating any bugs. It creates the exact files that we need that are going to work exactly with this code base. And because of all of that, just like that, it's built us the exact feature that we wanted. It's created all the files that we needed in the exact right place with no bugs. You can see when we come back into our app, we have a new feature which will go ahead and transcribe this video for us. So all we need to do is submit this video. It will download it, convert that video to an MP3 file, and then send it off to OpenAI to generate a transcript. I haven't tested this yet, but we can see just from the first test, it's working first try. We didn't even need to fix any bugs. And this is exactly the reason why I developed CodeSpring. I wanted to create some sort of knowledge-based system that we could create visually that we could understand that would get full context of the code base, use this to train the AI, and make it so much quicker, easier, and efficient to build new features. Because building features Features like this shouldn't take more than one prompt. You shouldn't be going around in infinite AI loops constantly trying to get the AI to debug things. So, so providing documentation is more than just writing out technical information. It's making sure that technical information works with your current code base. Now obviously this video is a full demonstration of how you would use CodeSpring to solve this problem. Now at the moment we're actually running a quick test. You can actually start a three-day trial for just one pound and see if CodeSpring's for you. You can join and compete with hundreds of other users to try and get your app launched. You can plan as many projects as you want. And if you're worried about learning and using tools like Cursor, we have starter kits for Lovable, Repler, and Bolt. We're adding more in the future, but we do recommend you use the CodeSpring boilerplate. So we have also created the CodeSpring Academy. So there's a whole load of courses showing you what tools you need and how to get them all set up. We're going to show you exactly how Cursor works and how to get it set up. We'll also show you how to download the boilerplate and get it up and running on your computer, along with a full detailed breakdown of how to build your first note take app and get it deployed from start to finish using Cursor and Cursor. Code Spring, from planning the app to setting up user accounts, linking the database, designing incredible UI, and getting it deployed with one click. So if you want access to all of that, you can click the link down below in the description for just one pound to try it out for three days. Now, for those of you guys that are using Cursor regularly and you think this would be a useful tool, here's a new feature that we're currently getting ready to deploy, which I think is really going to help you. At the moment, you have to download all the documents and upload them manually into Cursor. But what happens if you then make a new feature or you change some code, you've then got to come back and to CodeSpring and update the documentation here. So what we're doing is actually integrating directly into Cursor, which means when you send messages like this, you won't even need to tag the files like this. It'll be able to just read the documentation directly from CodeSpring accessing the memory and the knowledge as you go, continually updating and improving your documentation in CodeSpring. We're building loads of tools to help you with UI and design styles, but if there's any new ideas you'd like to see in CodeSpring, let me know down below.